Hello, I'm Robert Hadlock, and welcome to this KXAN News special presentation, Hidden History, Honoring Black History. Every February, we look back and honor black history in America. But the recognition of this rich and immense culture cannot be contained into just one month out of the year. We're here at the George Washington Carver Museum in East Austin. It's one of the many landmarks that honor African Americans in the city of Austin. In fact, one Austin woman is working to highlight the African American community one book at a time. KXAN's Candy Rodriguez brings the pages to life. A connection. I knew that there were other African Americans here, I just didn't know where they were. It's what we as humans search for. And so that's one of the things that, that I've made a mission to do is to create a community. Doing what the retired Army Lieutenant Colonel does best, telling stories. Telling the Army story, that was my job, telling the Army story. And so when I got out and the story of African Americans in Austin was just not being told, I wanted people to see what I saw. She came up with an idea, a book highlighting the achievements in black Austin. Because I lived on the west side for, you know, for over 10 years, and now I've got to go to the east side to find out, you know, this is where it started. This is where the African American community in Austin started. The Austin transplant first had to touch base, communicate, and connect. People didn't want, they didn't want to be in the book, and they didn't want to be in the book because most people are doing their job, and they're doing great things in their jobs, but they don't, they don't really get the accolades, but I told them it's not about you. It's about the little boy and the little girl who looks like you, who says, you know what, I wonder if I can do this. And they look at you and they say, yes, I can. Dozens and dozens of people fill the pages of this book. Although I was able to get 200 people in the book, there was so many more that were not. So Anita began the process again, calling, interviewing, writing, connecting. The result, a second book. Don't tell me there's no black people in Austin because I've got proof right here. I've got proof. <laughs> Two books highlighting nearly 500 African Americans, CEOs, city leaders, journalists, community activists, lawyers, doctors. Like, did you know that there's over 90 black doctors in Central Texas? Hi, I'm Aisha White, board certified plastic surgeon and owner of Quintessence Plastic Surgery. The New Orleans Ray surgeon credits a lot of her success to her parents and a supportive community. Hi, I'm Dr. White. Nice to meet you. Throughout the years, she's been able to break barriers and crush biases. When I see patients at the hospital or when patients come in the office, I, I, I think that for some of them, I'm definitely not what they're expecting to see. We are, we are here and this book helps to make us visible. Seen at a time when data shows African Americans make up less than 10% of Austin's population. Hi, my name is Ryan Coxum. I'm a vice president at Guarantee Bank and Trust. Ryan knows Austin. When I grew up here, I was always like, what are you talking about? There's black people all around. I got, you know, I got my family, go to a black church, and so you see black people all the time. But even Ryan says there's work left to be done. I knew that it was more of a problem in the last couple of years when, you know, people would start moving here and they'd be like, I don't see black people. Or they'd say stuff like, I haven't seen another black person in a couple of days. But for Ryan, Anita's books serve as a sign of hope and a reminder. Scroll through it that we are blossoming, we are beautiful people, and we are just gonna keep pushing on until, you know, Austin comes stronger, stronger, and stronger. We are just like everybody else, and I think that's the biggest lesson of it all. A lesson she hopes will instill compassion, understanding, and create a connection. Candy Rodriguez, KXAN News. We're just getting started with our Hidden History special, up next, we'll look back on the life of a woman who blazed an important trail in television news. The incredible story of June Bacon Bercy is next. But first, let's send it to KXAN's Jonathan Thomas with our Hidden History Trivia Clue. Hey, Robert, before we take a short break, here's our first Hidden History Trivia Clue. Okay, pay close attention. Generally speaking, this politician is as tough as they come. Not only did he survive the Vietnam War, he beat cancer too. Think you can solve it? We'll be back in two minutes with the answer. Welcome back. Let's look once again at our first hidden history trivia clue. Generally speaking, this politician is as tough as they come. Not only did he survive the Vietnam War, he beat cancer too. And the answer is retired Army General and former Secretary of State Colin Powell. 
More trivia coming up later, but first, let's send it back over to Robert. Thanks, Jonathan. We're here at the state capitol at the Texas African American History Memorial. This beautiful sculpture was created in 2016 by Ed Dwight. It features prominent figures in black history, including Texas' own Barbara Jordan, who was a legislator here at the Capitol. Let's send it back to NBC's Al Roker in New York City with the subject of our next Hidden History feature. Last summer, we lost a pioneer in the television weather business. Her name was June Bacon Bercy, and she was the first African-American woman to become an on-air meteorologist. She passed away back in July at the age of 90, but she left behind a legacy of overcoming barriers that can inspire us all. Chief Meteorologist Lisa Teachman of KSN in Wichita, Kansas, shares her incredible story. I'm June Bacon Bercy, meteorologist from the National Weather Service. She had a dream that became a legacy. She always loved the atmosphere. Uh, we grew up with weather balloons. June Bacon Bercy would leave her home in Wichita to earn her master's degree at UCLA. My mom was very focused on making sure we knew our roots. Her daughter says her heritage was just as important as the future she was paving for meteorologists and women of color. From her perspective, she had the skills and the, and the clear path from a, an, an intellectual uh, curiosity to uh, pursue a path that uh, had not um, been paid before. Already cold air is still barreling down in the midsection of our country. She'd become the first woman, an African American, to be awarded the American Meteorological Society seal of approval for excellence in television weather casting. The weekend weather with June Bacon Bercy bears the seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society. Her career included working at NOAA, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, and the National Weather Service, all at a time when men greatly outweighed women in scientific fields. She was obviously the woman, only woman in most of her classes. She faced, I, I think, more uh, issues with her gender than her race. When she was called a weather girl, she, she would smile and and say how, uh, you know, how proud she was to you know, be a meteorologist. Advancing the science of meteorology was a big goal of June's, particularly with women. That's what drew her to a network game show winning $64,000. That was her vision of being able to start a scholarship for women in meteorology. Leaving a legacy that paved the way for so many to follow. In Wichita, Chief Meteorologist Lisa Teachman for Hidden History. Now get this, June Bacon Bercy, catching her first big break in TV meteorology in 1971, when the weather forecaster at her station was arrested for robbing a bank. Talk about cold cash. That was the start of what became a three decades long career in meteorology. In New York, I'm Al Roker. Robert, back to you in Austin. Thanks, Al. Coming up, we're headed out to LBJ High School here in Austin where one coach has turned that school into a basketball powerhouse. How he did it after the break. But first, more Hidden History trivia with Jonathan Thomas. Jonathan Thomas once again in the KXAN News Studio. Time now for our second Hidden History trivia clue. She reigned supreme as one of the greatest artists of her generation, and she sang at the inauguration of three U.S. presidents. You've got two minutes to figure it out. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back. Here's another look at our Hidden History Trivia Clue, number two. She reigned supreme as one of the greatest artists of her generation, and she sang at the inaugurations of three U.S. presidents. The answer, of course, is the Queen of Soul herself, Aretha Franklin. More trivia later, but for now, let's go back out to Robert. In Northeast Austin at Lyndon Baines Johnson Early College High School, there's a coaching legend who has racked up more than two decades of success on the basketball court. As Black History Month and this year's basketball season comes to a close, Chris Tavares introduces us to Coach Freddie Rowland. Freddie Rowland had big dreams growing up in rural central Texas. People that had uh, prestige, especially uh, black Americans, well, if you was a teacher, you was it. If you was a preacher, you was it. There's no question that Rowland is it. He's been it for more than two decades leading the Jags to 22 straight district titles, three state tournaments, and more regional tournament appearances than he can remember. I don't keep up with numbers, you know, I just do play the games. Uh -huh. But what's more important to Roland than all the wins and banners is the impact of his family's history here. I'm from outside of Lockhart, a little place called St. John Colony, 
and I'm really proud of that place because that's where our, a number of our slave family came out, bought land, and made it a community. Roland's great-grandmother was one of the freed slaves who helped found St. John Colony. I'm standing on slave-bought land. Knowing his own family's story, Roland wants his athletes to learn theirs. We should never let our history die. I talk to our kids all the time about history. I talk to them all the time about the things that they can accomplish. And I talk to them about legacies and things. Leave something here that you will be proud of. But Roland does more than just talk about it. As a black man coaching at a predominantly black school, he's a living example of what the students at LBJ can do. I always dress business like, you know, and I wanted the kids to see that. I want our kids to see you can do good. You can do what you can help other people do good. Being that example has kept rolling at LBJ despite overtures from college programs and better paying high school jobs. It wasn't about the money, it was about these kids, our kids. A mentor, a historian, a coach. I do I do wear a lot of hats, I tell you. Hats he wears with pride. Chris Tavares, KXAN News. He hails from Detroit, Michigan, but you better believe he'll go down in history as an Austin radio legend. The extraordinary life of John Hanson Jr. is next, but first another round of Hidden History Trivia with Jonathan Thomas. Robert, thanks. It's time for our Hidden History Trivia clue number three. Here we go. He was once crowned as Time Magazine's Man of the Year, but that pales in comparison to his Nobel Peace Prize. I'll have the answer for you after a short break. We'll be right back. Jonathan Thomas back here in the KXAN News Studio with another look at our third Hidden History trivia clue. He was once crowned as Time Magazine's Man of the Year, but that pales in comparison to his Nobel Peace Prize. We're talking about the American Civil Rights Movement leader Martin Luther King Jr. Speaking of MLK, let's send it back out to Robert Hadlock at King's Statue on the University of Texas campus. He's been on the Austin Airwaves since 1974, and even today, John Hanson Jr is a trusted voice in the African-American community on Austin's two public radio stations. John has a unique place on the dial, both as a skilled interviewer and a unique old school disc jockey. Dr. Lord W. Cheevers. This is one side of veteran Austin broadcaster John Hanson Jr. What was it about infectious diseases that sparked your interest? Since 1980, he has produced and hosted the nationally syndicated radio series In Black America. He's conducted more than 745 probing interviews. The first interview in Black America when I took over was with Yolanda King, and that was interesting. Uh, we talked about her dad. Uh, we talked about her growing up uh, as the eldest and what was it like uh, being a daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The Detroit native has featured people from all walks of life on his show. He is particularly proud of how he persuaded the agent for a Motown legend to give an interview. I said, well, maybe I'll try this. My grandmother attended her father's church and I dropped that on her manager and it worked. So I interviewed uh, Aretha Franklin. You do know we're just getting started. It's Valentine's Day. It's ever loving. It's the old school Happy Feet Dance Party at your KUCX 989. This is Hanson's other job. Each Friday afternoon from 4 till 7 on KUTX, he morphs into the fun loving disc jockey Johnny D. They say I got gangs of swing, oodles and oodles of rock. Plenty of chive, liquid soul by the pound. Got carbonated rhythm to wash it down. Playing the music that got you in trouble. It's really old school when you look at how I go about putting the program together. I always script the first six songs, and after that, it's just. After spending nearly 50 years in Austin, I asked Hanson to reflect on how the local African American community has fared. Somewhat better, somewhat stagnant. I would have liked to see a little bit more progress. I have never gotten beyond why there's only one African American on the city council. As for his career, he sees it as having lived the best of both worlds. You gotta take those. I've always been, you know, interested in individuals and what they do. And then the fun part of playing, you know, 
playing records and get paid for it. You, you, other than working for National Geographic, I don't think there's a better job. <laughs> An American sports legend who was just getting started on his next chapter in life is taken from the world far too soon. A look back on the life and times of Kobe Bryant is coming up, but not before a final hidden history trivia clue with Jonathan Thomas. Time for our final hidden history trivia clue, so put your thinking caps on. She's been called the greatest of all time by her peers, and she's hoping to strike gold again in this year's Tokyo Olympics. Better think fast, because we'll be back in two minutes with the answer. Stay with us. Before the break, we gave you this clue. She's been called the greatest of all time by her peers, and she's hoping to strike gold again in this summer's Tokyo Olympics. That would be none other than the most decorated gymnast in the history of the sport, Simone Biles. And by the way, you'll be able to see Biles compete in her second Olympic Games this summer right here on KXAN. For our final story of the evening, let's send it back to Robert Hadlock. Thanks, Jonathan. Our final Hidden History report lands us here at Sushi High Restaurant on Guadalupe Street in Central Austin. Here, this mural has sprung up, honoring the late Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter Gianna. They were among nine people killed in a helicopter crash in January. And while Bryant's Texas ties were minimal at best, he's still being honored here in Austin. Just one example of how far-reaching the late basketball superstar's legacy is. KXAN News producer Gary Williams says one final goodbye to Kobe Bryant. Where were you when you heard the news? The LA Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter Gianna, and seven others died in a helicopter crash in late January. As one of the greatest black icons of his generation, Kobe was laid to rest in February, fittingly during Black History Month. Today we look back on his life in 24 images. Seems fitting too. The thing is, when you step into the national spotlight as a teenager, the audience has front row seats to everything. Time after time we saw the highest of highs, and we saw the lowest of lows. We saw your failures and we saw when you had to face them. We saw your rivals, the challengers who fueled your competitive spirit. We know you saw them too. We saw you become a threat to surpass the greatest of all time. And we saw that same man shed tears at your funeral. Of course, we saw the championships, even the Olympic gold medals. And when you were victorious, we saw the White House recognize you. And when you died, the White House took notice again social media and all. We saw you walk away from the game of basketball after 20 years in the NBA. After that, we saw you almost seamlessly enter the next phase of your life. We saw you trade in basketball trophies for something new. And we saw your family grow and watched you grow too. When you passed away, we witnessed the hurt. In Los Angeles, where you spent your career, all the way to the Philippines where you're still beloved even in Austin, Texas of all places. And when we saw that your daughter was on that helicopter with you, we felt it. We really felt it. To Kobe, Gianna, and the seven others we lost that day, farewell for now. And Kobe, we'll see you later. Thank you for joining us for this special KXAN News presentation, Hidden History, Honoring Black History. If you missed any part of this program or would like to see it again, you can always watch it at our website, kxan.com. For now, I'm Robert Hadlock. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.